Now one of my favorite vegetarian meals is a North Karnataka jolada roti uta. We want to make sure that we spread all the butter on that busy jowar roti. Mm. This is a preparation that's rather mellow in its flavors. Just when I said that, some spice got me at the back of my throat. Every once in a while, if you want to change some flavors, go for some zunka. Mm. That kambu chutney by itself was rather aggressive, mm. but tasting it in this rasam, it's a different thing altogether. Hi, folks. This is Kripala Mana, Gourmet on the Road, and you're watching Food Lovers TV. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and strong. So today we've stepped out for lunch, a vegetarian lunch. Now one of my favorite vegetarian meals is a North Karnataka jola da roti uta or a jowar bhakri meal. This is a meal that's fairly balanced in terms of all the nutrition that you need and it's also a meal that's big in terms of the flavor that it conveys to your palate. And the eatery that I've picked for lunch today is part of a group called the Kamath Yatri Nivas group. Now this is a group that has a formidable presence in Karnataka and some say it was their eatery, the Kamath Yatri Nivas in Gandhi Nagar that actually introduced the concept of a North Karnataka meal to Bengaluru way back in the 90s. Now Kamath Yatri Nivas in Gandhi Nagar no longer exists. But this afternoon, we are on our way to Kamath Bugle Rock, their eatery in Baswanagudi, South Bengaluru, which serves the Jawar Bhakri meals. So this is an eatery that's perched on the roof, on the terrace of a building. I can see some Jawala Roti being made there. Always a good sign when you walk into an eatery and you catch a glimpse of the food that's being prepared. Namaskara. Kutkul Vada. It's just about one and I can see people tucking into their meals already. This is my first time here so I don't really know what to expect. I've done a takeaway from this particular eatery once during lockdown time. But today as I was looking for a place where I could savor some North Karnataka flavors, I thought of this place. The best thing about eating of a plantain leaf is the act of cleaning the leaf even before you savor the meal. So you're actually making a connection with your lunch even before the food has come through this leaf. The good thing about a North Karnataka meal is that you will always have plenty of greens. So I've got some fenugreek leaves, some menthe sappu and also some spring onions. I've heard that it was this group that actually introduced the concept of a North Karnataka meal on a banana leaf to Bengaluru. Until then they were of these eating houses that would serve you a plate meal but out here they decided to introduce a banana leaf meal and this banana leaf is not really a typical Hubli tradition or North Karnataka which is where the food comes from but it's a tradition that's more prevalent in South Canada. From past uh, 10 years, I was not fond of food in Bangalore. Okay. Restaurants, okay. To be frank. But after your videos, like, oh, okay. now I can enjoy. Thank you very much. Really grateful that you feel that way. <laughs> so, have you come here before? No, no, no. no the first time. Yeah. You keep coming here. So, I've come to the right place. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Happy eating. I always go by what consumers, what diners have to say about the place. Because it's the diners who visit a place day in day out who are actually the best judge of the food of a place olige ah so start sweet in the madbeko idu bele olige some tuppa you have to have some goodness of that lush tuppa in your life this tuppa has not only been absorbed by the bele olige but has also lent some to that bale ele to that plantain leaf mm. the joy of eating a holi drenched with some ghee. Mm. So traditionally the custom in most meals here in the south 
is that you always begin with the dessert and in this case the holi hai hmm. this roti is going to get a lashing of the ghee that's already on the leaf and also some butter some butter on top well the rest of the items on my banana leaf on the plantain leaf came rather quickly before i had time to finish my holige hmm holige single se karta hai ha ah, holige wow so this is an unlimited meal but the holige is single so let's take stock of what we have on our leaf here we had the holige we of course have the greens the fenugreek leaves you have some spring onions there you have the happala you have some cucumber staying with the raw you also have the kusamri that's made of the moong bean you have the zunka here this is basically a preparation of chickpea paste that's tempered with a whole bunch of spices and also some greens that go into it whether it's the chilies whether it's coriander some sesame seeds etc the maharashtrians have a liquidy version of this called the pitala but this is the zunka which is formed in north karnataka you have a salad here you have a raita of sorts and then you have the palya so this is basically the alsande kadu palya or the black eyed beans you have the harve soppu the greens this is a staple of a north karnataka meal the yenagai so basically you have a paste a spice paste that is stuffed into the brinjal the brinjal is sauteed and then also cooked in that masala and this is a speciality so if wherever you go for a north karnataka meal the yenagai has to be a part of that and to add some more spice to your meal you have the various chutney so this is the kempu chutney here predominantly colored by the chilies there this is the gurelu chutney the niger sea chutney you also have the shenga here the shenga puri some salt sugar and some pickle mm i can taste some of the spice of that alsande kadu mm you know so typical north karnataka meals you will find that the palyas will be dry you will find a madke kadu you will find some other preparations which are dry but out here the vegetables are served in a semi gravy sort of a form you want to make sure that we spread all the butter on that busy jowar roti so for those of you who may be worried about gluten well a jowar bakri has no gluten absolutely mm so the jowar bakri here is a sort that's quite small in its diameter but i guess you can eat more of the jowar bakri anyways let's get to some of the chutney gorelu chutney shenga puri the peanut chutney and also some of that kempu chutney mm i can taste the heat of the garlic some heat of the chili and of course the crunch of the peanuts and plenty of curry leaf ha huh? curry leaf do agarne ho gaye the crispy curry leaf that's gone into this into the shenga chutney that shenga chutney is spicy the gorelu chutney or the niger sea chutney is a chutney that's quite fibrous in its texture and also has a bit of a tang so when you're savoring some of those condiments and if you're not used to spice certainly a good idea to enlist the assistance of some mosuru some yogurt to round off some of that spicy hit so you want to mix your shenga chutney with the mosuru and also the gorelu and dive in with some of the जवार भाकरी द जोड़ा द रोटी दैट योग कंप्लीटली टोन्स डाउन द स्पाइसी हिट ऑफ द चटनी बिजी रोटी बर्ली बर्ली सो आई थिंक ऑल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट दीज आर स्मॉलर रोटीज एंड वॉट यू वुड टिपिकली फाइंड इन अ जवार रोटी मील यू कैन ऑल्सो ईट मोर ऑफ द रोटीज sense of satisfaction right from saying i ate two rotis i ate three rotis i ate four rotis mm. the gorelu chutney if you haven't tasted it for the first time has a sort of texture and flavor that takes a little getting used to the shenga chutney though is a sort that will find ready acceptance with your palate provided of course you're used to the spice mm. because in this you got the pungency of the garlic 
coupled with the assault of the red chili there is also some gram flour perhaps and of course you have the nuttiness of the shenga but i think what you want to do is get some of the yogurt into the chutney to smoothen some of that spicy edge and if the spice is a little too much for you some roti all by itself will help i think in north karnataka they savor the roti just by itself but i think out here in bengaluru we like a bit of the bedne and if one thinks that the butter is a little too much i think got to also look at the fact that a jowar roti meal is perhaps one of the most balanced meals that you can find so you've got your greens here the greens are in the form of the fenugreek leaves you've got some raw vegetable in the onion there you've got some raw salad there you've got the cucumber and then you have other components you've got some protein that comes from the beans you got more greens there in that soppu you got carbs in the form of the jola the roti and mind you it's gluten free carbs and then you've got some dairy there you've got some yogurt you've got some buttermilk and to spice things up you also have the condiments also the other aspect is there certain components that generate heat so for example the yen gai also has some sesame seeds in it also has some peanuts in it so does the junka so those are the sort of dishes that generate heat but then you have dishes like the soppu which are quite cooling on the body along with the yogurt and the buttermilk so a good north karnataka meal is always about balance balance in terms of the components of the meal and the nutritional values and also balance in terms of flavors and also balance between preparations that are heaty in nature and those that help cool your body down and this chutney again tastes more of the spice the sort of spicing that's rather aggressive let's go for some of that alsande kaalu the black eyed beans I can taste the flavor of the roasted masala in that. There's also a bit of tang that comes from some tomato in that preparation. Let's go with some of that palya, the soppuna palya. Hmm. इधर सबसे सबसे के सपोई दे यार. इसके रस्ते सब. हाँ. निम्न ऐसे रहनो. कर मनो. हाँ. मनो. मनो. एस टू वर्षन ने दे रहा है इलिए. अन्नेर वर्षा. अन्नेर वर्षा. flavor of some dill in that and dill has a very peculiar aroma and flavor so when i asked manu he said how do solba sabse ke soppu kuda ho gaye the harve soppu theek hai hmm there's also some tuwar dal that's gone into that palya ah busy the busy the idu kuda busy the so when you eating these meals i would recommend always take your portions servings in small because this is an unlimited meal so there is no restriction on the number of servings that you can have but when you take it in small portions and small measures you are ensuring that each time you taste it it's hot mm. get some of the bendne that got away the idea is to feed the roti the bendne not the leaf let's taste next some of that yen gai taste some of the masala first mm. that yen gai is rather mellow in its flavors you can taste somewhere the nuttiness of the sesame seeds the saswe the mustard seeds mm and the eggplants have been cooked to the consistency where they quite literally dissolve in your mouth so how they make the yen gai is quite interesting so they make the spice paste mm so and the spice paste has ingredients like chilies has some coconut has some seasoning has some sesame seeds cumin also a bit of i think hunse annu that goes into it and then they make a paste and then that paste the eggplant is quartered quartered up to the crown so when you were to lift the eggplant the eggplant would still come together and then they stuff the paste in between that eggplant in between the quarters and then they saute it they fry it for a while with some seasoning and after it's fried that paste is added back to the yen gai along with some water and then they allow it to simmer for a while till the eggplant softens and soaks up that masala completely and that's how that very special north karnataka dish the yen gai is made mm. this is a preparation that's rather mellow in its flavors just when i said that some spice got me at the back of my throat 
And every once in a while, if you want to change some flavors, go for some zunka. Mm, there's some coconut in that. I can taste the flavor of some asafoetida. Some peanuts too, some onions there. So what they do in this is they prepare a green paste with some coriander, green chilies, etc. Some peanuts as well that I'm biting into. And that goes in while that chickpea paste is cooking. So once it cooks, with a whole bunch of other spices, turmeric, chilli powder, etc. It's then smeared onto a plate and left to cool for some time. And once it cools down, they cut it into pieces, into dices and serve. Get some fibre as well, along with the zunka. The other thing with the condiments also, is that it helps you moderate the spice level. So if you feel that some of the dishes aren't too spicy, that Kempu chutney that I didn't fancy just by itself, I think may do well to perk up the spice or the heat component of this Yangai. You know, I've tasted quite a few Jola Roti Utas. You've seen them on the channel. I've tasted them here in Bengaluru at Basaveshwar Khanavli. I've tasted in Hubli. I've tasted in some of the other eateries as well, like Nalapaka, etc. I think each eatery has its own style when it comes to the preparations. So when you talk about a North Karnataka, Jola Roti Uta or a Jawar Bhakri meal, I think each place brings in its nuances, its style of preparations. For instance, out here I find some of the preparations are quite mellow in the manner in which they approach your palate. Quite atypical to some of the hardcore hubli preparations which will set your tongue on fire. And I think what eateries also need to do is they need to adapt based on the audience that they find in the area that they are located in. So I guess in a place like Baswanagudi, people may not appreciate too much of an intense chilli spike. The garlic I could taste plenty in that Shenga chutney, but it's a little muted elsewhere. And I guess that's also a reflection on the taste of the locals in and around the area. Mm, I love the flavor of the soaked lentils in that. It's quite moist. And then the crunch, the slightly sweet crunch of the kai, the coconut, with some coriander, I suppose. I've asked for the rice, but I think I can easily manage another roti. You know, the roti got there, roti got there. So this is a part of the special meal. You get a bhaji, a mirchi bhaji. Just want to get some hot gravy on the young guy, on the badne kai. Mm. For those from the north, you probably know bengan ka bharta. But picturize that bengan ka bharta still whole, albeit quartered. That's really the kind of texture maybe slightly firmer than that, that you can expect to find in a Yengai. The spices though are the sort that are warming, be it the red chilies that get crushed into the paste or the sesame seeds. I think typical North Karnataka meals, you will not find raita, you will find usually the mosaru and some greens on the side. I think here they made an allowance to suit local palates. Mm, I can taste some of the Oma, the carom seeds in that bhaji. In the suru? Sarki. Tuppa suru? Ah, haki. So, this is a sambar with the saute kai some sorekai which is a bottle gourd and the nugge kai, the drumstick. Busy there, busy there. There's sambar that's rather mellow. Very, very mild. I can taste some flavors of the lentil there, some acidity that comes from the tomatoes. And of course, there's also the tuppa. So the tuppa further tones down the flavor of the sambar with its lush mouthfeel. I think I'm definitely going to draw from some of that yen guy, from some of the masala in that yen guy to fortify the flavors of the sambar. You know, because you've been tasting some of those chutneys, you've been tasting the spicy shenga chutney with the garlic, with the chilies, you've been tasting some of that kempu chutney, which is spicy again in itself. And somewhere the palate also gets accustomed to that level of spiciness while you're savoring this meal. 
and so therefore suddenly when you tasting the sambar which is quite mellow in its character it becomes relatively even more mellower in terms of its flavors and slowly but surely i'm reaching a point where i'm beginning to sweat at the back of my head and also up front it is in rasam it is tomato rasam ah i want my rice to be drowning in the rasam but the other day i poured that much rasam and i didn't realize that the table was a little tilted so when i got up from my meal my pants too had drunk a bit of the rasam so after that i am a little careful this rasam too is a sort that is rather tame in its flavors there's a bit of sweetness that i'm tasting somewhere in there i don't know if there's a bit of bella that's gone into it but it's a rasam that's rather rather mellow and i think will certainly benefit being in the company of this appala mm. and also perhaps that kempu chutney that kempu chutney by itself was rather aggressive mm. but tasting it in this rasam is a different thing altogether this brings me back to the point that i just made a meal like this is extremely customizable whether you like things spicy or whether you like things a tad muted when it comes to the spice levels you will find what you're looking for on this bale ele uta on this banana leaf meal the custom is to finish with some mosuru although i have certainly eaten a fair bit already i think we'll stick to the tradition and maybe get some of that open kai some of the pickle and this is a mango pickle and the sort that will make for a terrific partner to that masuranna mm. that trupti that you get when you savor some curd rice at the end of your meal i think only a south indian will relate to completely well to close things you have some ice cream i think this must be a pistachio ice cream with some fruits the fruits and the ice cream are the sort that provide a pleasing end to your jowar bagri meal here so basically when you order the special uta you get the holige you get the ice cream and fruit salad you get the bhaji and you also get the beeda the bale handu you get it even when you order the regular meal regular meal is to 200 195 and special meal 260 260 so depending on what you want to savor If you want to stay focused only on the food, I would recommend the regular meal itself. But if you want that bhaji and you want that holi ge, and also that ice cream, and not to forget that beeda, well, then the special meal is what you should order. Thank you. So if you happen to be in South Bengaluru and want to savor a North Karnataka meal, a tasty North Karnataka meal. that has made allowances for local tastes and palates definitely head to kamad bugal rock here in baswanagudi i hope you enjoyed this sumptuous lunch episode until the next time take care stay safe stay strong and happy eating if you'd like to support the work that we do at food lovers tv Do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating.